Good morning, everybody. Uh, uh, today, uh, I, I will try to discuss uh, the another module uh, of advances in laser uh, welding and joining technologies. So, this module is the computational welding mechanics. Actually, in this module, uh, we will try to focus on the different, but different, but very simple mathematical calculation uh, normally follow uh, in the uh, welding processes. So, uh, there are uh, if you look into the welding mechanics that uh, a lot of subject actually involved uh, in, in this uh, welding process. For example, from heat transfer to fluid flow, even at the same time electromagnetic field also generated during the welding process and finally, there is a some stress analysis then residual stress is also generated during the welding process. So, there is a wide range of area actually covers. Uh, uh, this module and uh, that is uh, computational welding mechanics. If you look into the subsection uh, of this module, the first will focus on the analysis of the heat flow in the welding process, uh, then how to estimate the cooling rates and, and uh, because we have already discussed that what is the influence of cooling rate in the microstructural changes in the welding process or maybe how cooling rate affects in the solidification process of the welding that three uh, we uh, will cover in the um, uh, welding metallurgy uh, section, but here we will try to focus only for the mathematical calculation or estimation of the different parameters um, that actually very significant in the welding process. Then we will try to look into the models of the welding heat sources, because uh, how to represent the heat sources from the different source uh, used in the welding process for example, arc, laser, electron brim. Uh, so, all these cases uh, the presentation of representation of the heat source in the mathematical form are different. So, that will try to focus on the how to do that kind of heat source modeling. Then I will try to focus on that uh, analytical solution of the temperature distribution and then uh, analytically how you can estimate the temperature uh, within the zone because this temperature distribution is important because uh, we, we can use this distribution of the temperature and we can estimate the cooling rate from temperature distribution and finally, we can correlate this cooling rate and microstructure. So, in that sense we need to understand the uh, uh, correct estimation or distribution of the temperature and uh, in the welding process. Then heat transfer mechanism and if you try to uh, apart from the analytical solution what, what are the other numerical solution can also developed in the welding process to uh, for the solution of the temperature distribution, fluid flow and that means material flow within the oil pool and then uh, amount of the residual stress or uh, uh, distortion level at the final oil structure. So, that kind of uh, coverage also there then uh, will be look into that influence of the surface active elements, because um, this phenomena is very significant uh, uh, theoretically uh, that we, we, we already describe what is the importance of the surface active elements in the oiling process, but mathematically how we can take care of this apex of the surface active elements in the mathematical modeling of the oiling process that we will try to discuss um, in this uh, module. And then finally, um, what is the amount of the residual stress will be generated or uh, what is the amount of the distortion will be generated in the final oil joint that is very much significant for the designing of the um, uh, any component or when you try to uh, fit it the one component with respect to the other component this distortion level and residual uh, is very significant and residual stress is important to know the service life of the oil joint. So, in that respect all this phenomena uh, is possible to estimate mathematically and that is the focus of this uh, module. So, before doing that let us try to understand the what are the physical aspects involved uh, in the oiling process. So, let us look an example here that uh, this example shows that there is a heat source. So, that heat source comes uh, from the laser or some electric arc or some electron beam or due to uh, a resistance heating as well. So, with the application of the heat source there is a certain zone localized area the melting happens and the surrounding uh, area also that is the heat affected zone so some development temperature uh, above the base material above the ambient temperature. So, with the advancement of the at the same time with the advancement of the uh, heat source the subsequently part is solidified and then apart from the solidification zone certain part is the heat affected zone. Here we can see uh, the different zone the melt pole solidified zone and the heat affected zone uh, from the figure itself. So, typical this is a typical characteristic. So, 
the if we see the physical aspect point of view here you see there is a application of the heat flux from the heat source the localized melting and solidification and within this molten pool there is a flow of the molten material. So, we often neglect the flow of the molten material, but that is that having some importance also we will discuss this one. And then finally, what happens there is a uh, there is a uh, the, the, this variation of the temperature distributions brings some differential thermal expansion and contraction and that thermal expansion and contraction actually leads to the formation of the residual stress and distortion in the oil structure. And that structural changes that due to the effect of the heat, the structural changes comes from the solidification behavior in the oil rest structure. So, all these phenomena actually involve in case of the this we are talking about the uh, fusion welding process. Now, other aspects also if you see the uh, physical aspects of the welding process when there is involved in the metal transfer from the consumable electrode also. Here we can see the doublet transfer or allowing the doublet transfer we can in the mathematical sense we can say that within the domain there is a mass transfer also happens when, when we using the some consumable electrode. Then if heat uh, concentration is very high there is a vapor, uh, evaporation, evaporation uh, of the material also happens if the peak temperature is very high or maybe uh, if the maximum temperature this is the evaporation temperature of the material. So, evaporation of the metal will also occur at this point of view. So, that molten droplet transfer from the some consumable electrode that actually influence on the oil pool uh, in the sense that uh, molten uh, when there is a continuous adding of the molten pool that continuous adding to the mass in the domain solution domain and that actually influence the material flow within the small oil pool. And of course, with the advancement of this uh, uh, consumable electrode the subsequently solidification also happen and heat lost uh, due to the convection and radiation from the surface or inside the domain uh, just at the solid liquid interface towards the solid domain the heat is conducted away and that finally, when uh, conducted away and finally, when it is come into and on the surface there is a heat lost by the convection and uh, radiation in that mode. So, this uh, all these physical aspects actually in involved in the welding process. So, considering all these physical uh, activities involved here and uh, representation of this in some mathematical model it becomes more complex and complex. So, we can uh, look into the one by one. So, first we will look into the, the thermal aspect then metal flow aspect and finally, we will look into the solidification uh, that means, residual stress or distortion aspect. Now, if we look into that uh, focus on the specific to the oil pool what are the different driving forces is acting because if we know of course, there is a heat conduction uh, within the molten molten pool uh, at the same time the at the outside of the solid liquid interface, but at the same time there is a flow of the molten material. And we, we, if you see if there is a arc welding process that it is not necessary the surface will be the uh, flat which was the uh, initial because there is a if we arc and there is a there is a acting of the arc pressure on the top surface. So, that changes the free surface profile. So, free surface can be as uh, can be in curve uh, having some uh, curvature curve, um, having some curvature. So, it is not it is may not be uh, flat. So, at the same time evaporation and on the uh, in when there is a interaction between the uh, arc and the um, molten pool. So, Marangoni shear stress is act actually in the uh, on the surface that means, uh, surface tension force actually act when the two different medium in come in con contact with the liquid and gaseous medium. So, at the interface definitely there uh, uh, some Marangoni shear stress. So, that Marangoni shear stress basically or maybe in the surface tension force actually one of the driving force that control the uh, magnitude and the direction of the material flow within the small oil pool. And at the same time since in case of arc welding uh, since there is a flow of the current involved. So, that will create some electromagnetic field within the oil pool. So, electromagnetic field also having some influence on the uh, material flow. And of course, buoyancy force is also acts and that buoyancy force and electromagnetic force actually these two are the body force that means, uh, uh, these two body force is res responsible and that actually uh, influence 
the material flow pattern uh, within the oil pool. What just outside the oil pool, uh, there is a, a conductive heat transfer also occurs. And uh, with the uh, after some time, that means when the heat source moves from one point to other point, then uh, previous point, uh, previous zone actually solidify. So, after solidification, there is a, some microstructural changes also happen that is different from the uh, base material structure. So, this microstructural changes also happens uh, within the uh, molten pool because th th that depends on the solidification behavior of this um, material, but at the same time there is a microstructural ch changes also happens in the heat affected zone. Uh, that depends that heat affected zone we can say that the solid state phase transformation also happens within the heat affected zone and then structure may be different from the solidified zone or maybe from the uh, with respect to the base material. So, this this all phenomena happens during the oiling process, but uh, at the same time there is a there is some convective uh, convection and radiation heat loss uh, from the outer uh, boundary. So, this is the typical uh, physical aspects or physical phenomena actually happens in the oiling process. Now, we will tr try to look into how all these aspects uh, can be represented in the mathematical sense. Now, uh, before uh, after fix fusion oiling may be in the physical aspect of solid state oiling uh, uh, we, uh, we can see that in the solid state oiling process normally the heat is generated by frictional uh, frictional force or frictional heat generation mainly happens instead of uh, arc uh, or laser source in case of fusion oiling process. So, uh, in solid state oiling uh, uh, mainly uh, along with the frictional heat generation there is a steering action also happens that we observe in the frictional state oiling process. So, that uh, plasticization of materials also happens in this process. Mm. Then, but in this case the solid state oiling process the temperature is limited uh, below the melting point temperature. So, uh, in, in this case the temperature is well below the melting point temperature. So, there is a no problem of the that is related to solidification it happens in case of fusion oiling process. Then since the uh, um, maximum temperature is below the melting point temperature of this material uh, during the solid state oiling process. So, here the solid state phase transformation uh, is mainly happens. And uh, finally, the same heat conduct uh, that we can we can uh, we can we can see the heat heat transfer also happens um, that we normally um, found out through the um, by solving the heat conduction equation. And of course, here we can model the material flow also. But in this case, material flow is the uh, maybe we can consider solid state rolling process mostly the uh, viscoplastic nature of the material, and based on that we can. Uh, model the material flow and most of the cases we can find out the distribution of the strain rate uh, in case of the solid state oiling process. So, finally, uh, like uh, fusion oiling process, but uh, we, uh, there is a some residual stress generation, but distortion level in solid state oiling process is normally very less as compared to the fusion oiling process. Of course, these are the typical advantage of the solid state oiling process or difference I can say uh, as compared to the fusion oiling process. Now, analysis of the heat flow, there are what way, what are the uh, governing equation uh, or any constitutive equation we can use uh, for the uh, analysis of the heat, uh, heat flow or for the temperature to estimate the temperature distribution uh, within the domain of interest. So, in case of uh, um, oiling process, uh, we uh, the governing equation, we consider the heat conduction equation, Fourier's law of heat conduction equation, we can use it and we can we can solve for the temperature in this case. Of course, a non Fourier heat conduction is also important, but non Fourier heat conduction in, we, we just apply in, in very specific cases uh, specifically in case of the ultra short pulse uh, laser welding process. So, in that case there is a need of solution of the non Fourier heat conduction equation. Uh, we will see the difference between the Fourier heat conduction and non Fourier heat conduction uh, in the um, in terms of the, uh, the uh, differential equation. Then next part is that uh, although the governing equation heat conduction is we can solve, but how to represent the heat source. There is a uh, definitely the how representation of heat source normally happens in term normally we represent in the mathematical way uh, assuming that it is a point heat source, assuming that it can be a line heat source that means energy transport through uh, that means it is a string line of the source 
and then either it can be distributed over a certain area or distributed over a volume. So, that is the distributed heat source. So, these are the typical division of the different nature of the heat source that we represent mathematically. But apart from the heat conduction equation, uh, it is also necessary to find out the sometimes we, so, we solve the equation of the heat transfer and the fluid flow. If we uh, more precisely estimate the temperature distribution, because the material flow within the small oil pool that actually influence the heat heat transfer or influence the temperature distribution. For example, heat conduction equation uh, here we are solve we generally solve only the heat conduction equation that means, without consideration of the material flow within the oil pool. Also approximately we can get some solution and that solution is also acceptable, but if we try to incorporate the effect of the material flow which actually happens in the fusion welding process in that case we can um, improve the uh, results at a lot or more accurately we can estimate the temperature distribution. Uh, of course, at the same time the uh, fluid flow and that means, velocity distribution within the small oil pool and we can explain the different phenomena associated with the fluid flow in the oil pool. But in this case uh, we normally solve the conservation of mass moment of our energy equation. So, in this case the energy transport equation we can if we, in, if we if energy equation what we consider in case of the heat conduction equation, but in this case the extra uh, term is the energy transport due to the um, uh, uh, flow field of the uh, material. So, that term is added in this case. So, then that we uh, necessary to solve along with the heat conduction equation in this case. And then for the material flow analysis the you can say the mass momentum equation or mo for momentum equation we generally solve the navier stokes equation to estimate the velocity field within the small oil pool. Of course, as compared to the heat conduction and this heat transparent fluid flow transport equation is uh, uh, computationally uh, more costly that means, computational time will be more in this case as compared to the heat conduction equation. And then another aspect is that uh, in case of uh, um, uh, heat conduction or in case of the try to estimate the um, um, uh, temperature distribution with the oil pool though in sometimes in case of laser welding and of course, uh, electron beam welding and sometimes in case of plasma welding also there is a formation of the keyhole formation may happen. So, in this case when there is a keyhole formation um, that keyhole uh, uh, is a domain within the oil pool and when uh, practically when we use the very high concentrated laser high power density is very high that actually try to create the uh, keyhole formation. So, that in the keyhole formation there is evolution of the liquid vapor interface. So, over time considering the effect of the interfacial phenomena like evaporation, homogeneous boiling and multiple reflection taking into in account and we can predict that we can develop the uh, geometrical model of the keyhole. So, that means, we can predict the size of the keyhole uh, in case of the laser welding process. So, otherwise apart from the keyhole if there is a conduction mode laser welding process. So, only heat conduction equation or maybe heat transfer fluid flow equation is sufficient to predict the temperature distribution. But is if when you use the very high concentrated heat in specifically in laser welding or electric beam welding condition, in this case there is a formation of the keyhole. So, we need to consider the keyhole effect and then we can do the we can improve the simulation process. Then simulation means we can improve the temperature distribution process in this case. So, these are the uh, typical aspects for the analysis of the heat flow. Now, we come to that point schooling rate is very significant parameter and we will see in the um, solidification process this uh, cooling rate is very significant important because by looking into the cooling rate or using the information available in the uh, phase, phase transformation diagram for example, uh, TTT diagram, CCT diagram and uh, 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 continuous this uh, type of phase transformation diagram. Uh, we, we can we, we can estimate that uh, if uh, with respect to the typ typical cooling rate and what should be the expected microstructure uh, in a uh, oil joint. So, that is why it is necessary to estimate the cooling rate during the oiling process just uh, before um, cooling rate means we understand the uh, rate of change of temperature that means change of temperature with respect to uh, time. So, that is the very simplified way to represent the cooling rate, but in welding process uh, how we can estimate in the uh, uh, cooling rate. Just let us look into these two figures. 
So, first figure actually represent the time versus uh, uh, temperature diagram at different location in a well joint. So, uh, for example, uh, if we take uh, one uh, specific metallic plate and we start welding from that means we are applying the heat source from one point and gradually the heat source is moving, but before doing that we can fix certain location within the workpiece. So, that fixed location we can measure the temperature that means that fixed location the temperature will vary with respect to time and that depends on the at what speed the oilic source is moving from one point to another point. So, that means it is like that only. So, for a fixed location this the curve represents the time versus temperatures cycle. So, if we have this information and practically this information uh, we generally capture using the by putting some thermocouple in the workpiece and then we capture the using the data logger we can measure the data time versus temperature and if we plot it we will getting the typical nature. So, first if we see there is an increment of the temperature we can say this is the heating phase that means one specific point there is a gradual increment of the temperature that means in that location if the heat source is going nearer to that point then exactly the nearest point with the, that point uh, with respect to the heat source. So, at this point it will achieve the maximum temperature and then if we further move the heat source then gradually there is a decrement of the temperature because heat source is away from that fixed location. So, temperature will decrease. So, that second phase when temperature will decrease we can say this is a uh, cooling phase. So, during the decrement of the temperature so that uh, basically the slope here the dt by dt that means change of temperature with respect to time graphically it represents the slope on this curve. So, that slope actually represents the rate of cooling, but if we convert the this typical time versus temperature uh, curve uh, in terms of the cooling rate dt by dt and with respect to welding time we can find out that there is a cooling rate actually varies. So, that means slope is not constant there is a continuous variation of the cooling rate that depends what way, what number of points we are considering or gap of the points we are between the two points we are considering here. So, but this is the uh, typical uh, cooling rate versus welding time that time. So, there is a variable cooling rate. Now, to uh, this variable cooling rate it is very difficult to predict the actual uh, microstructure and to link with the cooling rate. So, to avoid this kind of situation uh, we can represent um, or the cooling rate in the uh, that means we can say the average cooling rate value. So, average cooling rate value if you see the expression of the average cooling rate value T beta minus T alpha divided by uh, T beta by alpha that means, here T beta and T alpha is the two different phase uh, that uh, in the micro uh, in the structure microstructure different phase. So, different phase uh, the change of the phase ha happen from one temperature to the other temperature that gap phase change temperature of the beta phase what is the temperature and corresponds to the what is the phase change, uh, change temperature corresponds to the alpha phase. So, that means, over the uh, duration of this phase change temperature and what is the corresponding time is required uh, that ratio we can represent the in the average cooling rate. So, in that way we can this average cooling rate uh, estimation it gets some information that over the duration of the time uh, what is the duration of the time is required to change one phase to another phase and with in terms of their uh, temperature. So, that is why uh, if we do that then we can uh, we can find out the average uh, cooling rate and then we can more precisely predict the or maybe link this average cooling rate with respect to the typical uh, microstructure. We will discuss further on on this analysis that uh, how we can estimate the cooling rate also. Now, I come to that point of course, uh, there are um, different way to represent the heat source. So, that uh, here I am trying to look into that models of the welding heat source that is one of the uh, very important aspect in the computational welding mechanics. So, to understand that how to represent the heat source in uh, here, but if you look into that nature or type of the heat source can be different that means, it can be practically the heat, heat source can be from the arc heat can be come from the laser also heat source can be electron beam it can be resistant. So, all the different type and nature of the heat source are different, but mathematical representation is like that. 
we can represent the heat source uh, uh, starting from the point line and dis distribution uh, looking into that looking into the nature of the heat source. For example, it is a laser actually focused in the very small area. So, it is better uh, to represent the laser source as a line heat source. So, that means over the length of the line it is a string of the energy uh, that acts as a source of the heat uh, uh, and that source of the heat we finally, if we apply on the workpiece surface and uh, that will generate the uh, amount of the heat. So, that is one example. For example, arc. So, it is better it is not a good idea to represent the arc because arc heat source is more distributed um, that means, it is not concentrated in very small zone like laser. So, arc can be represented as a distributed heat source. So, like this it is a representation mathematical representation from the very simple point to the very uh, more realistic. For example, point and line heat source uh, uh, it is not uh, actually realistic, but realistic is the representation of heat source is more distributed and that distribution may happen over the surface or distribution can be considered over the volume also. So, so that distributed heat source to nature either surface heat source or volumetric heat source that is the more realistic heat source. Then volumetric real, volumetric uh, sorry surface heat source and that normally follow the distribution over a surface it is a follow the Gaussian distribution normally Gaussian distribution means at the center point the heat intensity is maximum and it gradually decreasing to the boundary uh, of the well defined zone. Then volumetric heat source, but volumetric when you try to represent the volumetric heat source when we can assume the as a certain time there is a heat uh, that a certain predefined volume can be represents at the source of the energy. But when these two aspects are involved in the to representation of the volumetric heat source one is the geometric shape, geometric shape that means what way the how what way we generally represent the uh, volume of the volumetric source. So, that normally we represent in the regular geometric shape for example, ellipsoidal double ellipsoidal that kind of or conical that is the regular geometric shape sometimes we use this to define the geometric shape of the volumetric and then second point is the distribution that means, over this geometric shape how the energy is distributed that means, it is not necessary that throughout the volume the uniform distribution it follow that means, throughout the volume it is better to represent the volume at the one specific center that means, one specific center point the heat intensity will be the maximum and then gradually it can decreasing that type of that uh, type that means, that Gaussian distribution most of the cases we follow, but of course, other type of the distribution can also be followed. Then another aspect is the two representation of the heat source that uh, whether the nature of the heat source or uh, representation of the heat source is symmetric or non-symmetric and what way we can decide whether it is symmetric or non-symmetric. For example, in case of uh, spot welding, uh, spot welding uh, this heat source can be represented as a in a symmetric nature, but in case of linear welding that means, when there is a movement of the heat source, uh, when there is a movement of the heat source uh, with respect to certain plane um, the heat source is uh, non-symmetric um, uh, either in that non-symmetric can be represented either in geometry or can be represented in either uh, distribution or both. We, in that way we can represent the different type of the heat source. So, we will we'll, uh, discuss more on that. Mm. Here models of the heat source uh, in welding uh, terminology or maybe in the um, uh, in case of welding process um, uh, you, you, we can find out the different type of the heat source model developed so far until it is developing and the other type of the heat source mo models in case of welding process. First is the circular Dix safe heat source model, then ellipsoidal heat source model, double ellipsoidal heat source model, quadruple ellipsoidal heat source model, conical heat source model, egg configuration heat source model, hybrid heat source model. So, these are the typical uh, names uh, that we using in case of the welding simulation that different type of the heat source model. Of course, there is much more, but here I am trying to uh, 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 make you understand that uh, what way we can represent the heat source. So, let us look into this first figure. So, here on the x y plane we have we consider the simply one circle. So, that means on this circle. So, this type of that means we assume that there is a surface heat flux. So, that means 
uh, heat, heat uh, in terms of the flux it is intensity uh, um, is uh, the one specific point at the center point at the origin point the int intensity is the maximum and then it is distributed throughout this area surface area. So, at the center point it is the maximum intensity is the maximum and then gradually if you go towards the uh, periphery of the circle. So, gradually it is or boundary the gradually it is decreasing. So, these are the this way we represent the Gaussian distribution of the heat source and uh, over the surface uh, and that uh, this this type of heat source normally we use in case of the spot welding that means, when there is a no movement of the heat source. So, that means, for the stationary heat source typical we use the uh, surface heat source. But uh, this surface heat source is limited when the sheet thickness is very small or maybe heat int intensity is very small. So, surface uh, surface heat flux or surface heat source model is more representative, but if the intensity is very uh, high intensity is very high then means in that case we consider generally the, the uh, not surface uh, heat source model that we can say volumetric heat source. In that case we represent the volumetric heat source that means, the heat is distributed over the volume. For example, if on the top surface it is on the circular shape then it can be like that on the along the z axis uh, and the on the x z plane it we can represent this uh, as a is a um, uh, kind of ellipse uh, part of the ellipse. So, uh, that means, over the surface the circular, but at the depth direction um, if you within the x z plane it can be like ellipse. So, therefore, if we represent the in case of spot welding, but a spot welding, but if heat intensity is very high then we can use the ellipsoidal heat source model. This is a one kind of the volumetric heat source model. So, that ellipsoidal heat source model is the first, first and second figure that represents the ellipsoidal heat source model. But there is a other things that is the case for the uh, spot welding. But if the heat source moves then what way we can represent the uh, heat source. That means, in this in this case the since the heat source is moving in or maybe in practical arc or laser is moving on spe specific direction. So, in that case it is not necessary with respect to the one plane it looks like exactly the symmetric nature. So, here the brings the non symmetric nature of the heat distribution as well as the geometric shape of the uh, oil pole which since there is a some finite amount of the velocity uh, one specific direction. So, in that case then that means, in that case it is called generally linear welding. So, in case of the linear welding then normally we use the uh, double ellipsoidal heat source model. Of course, we can use the volumetric heat source model, but the volumetric heat source model just merging the part of the two ellipsoidal heat source model. So, then it becomes the double ellipsoidal model. Here you can see that uh, third figure. So, uh, with respect to the y axis, uh, with respect to the y axis uh, the front side is the one ellipsoidal and the back side we can with the another ellipsoidal, but such that um, exactly um, the one parameter is the same in this case and uh, we can consider that merging the uh, two ellipsoidal and we can create the double ellipsoidal heat source model. That is the better representation of the uh, moving heat source for the high intensity, uh, high intensity uh, uh, laser or uh, electron beam or some other uh, high intensity arc also. So, with the in that case this is the representation of the heat so volumetric heat source by a uh, double by merging the two ellipsoidal. So, that is called double ellipsoidal heat source model. Then comes into the picture the quadruple uh, ellipsoidal heat source model. So, quadruple ellipsoidal heat source model it is a simply nothing but instead of the two ellipsoidal here we can use the four ellipsoidal heat source and we can merge it this geometric step to take into account the two non-linear uh, non-symmetric nature. One, one non-symmetric nature is that due to the welding movement in one direction uh, other is will be the uh, due to the two different material when you try to join two different material. So, two different material the energy absorption or uh, the uh, will be different because of their thermophysical properties are also different. So, in that case so, to, uh, to account all this non-symmetric uh, non nature uh, the energy distribution for the material A and material B uh, at the same time due to the linear movement in one direction 
we can merge the four ellipsoidal together and we can create uh, this uh, quadruple ellipsoidal heat source model. Of course, sometimes people use the conical heat source model because conical heat source uh, model is the in this case when the temperature gradient is very high along the depth direction maybe specifically for laser welding process. So, because heat intensity is very high. So, in that case we can use the represents the geometric shape of the uh, heat source as a uh, conical and uh, we can follow the other distribution also. And recently there is a development of the egg configuration heat source, heat source module discuss that the looking into the distribution simply modifying the ellipsoidal heat source model we can uh, convert we can develop the egg configuration heat source model and uh, sometime people use the hybrid heat source model that means by combining the conical and the ellipsoidal uh, certain part with the ellipsoidal source and certain part will be the conical heat source uh, to present the complex nature of the welding process or maybe in hybrid welding process the representation of heat source uh, uh, people normally use the hybrid heat source model by combining the two uh, different regular geometric shape and uh, develop the uh, heat source model for in that case. But one point is that there is a one uh, another type of the heat source model that is called the adaptive volumetric heat source model. So, adaptive volumetric heat source model uh, this is introduced uh, in the sense that uh, there is a um, this all these heat source model when you try to apply in the in simulation of the welding process we need to predefine all the parameters. For example, geometric parameters of the ellipsoidal source or maybe geometric for ellipsoidal or geometric parameters for the uh, conical or geometric parameters for the double ellipsoidal. So, to avoid these things if we uh, continuously adapt the with respect to the analysis time step or with respect to the load step if we continu continuously adapt the shape and size from the estimation of the temperature uh, uh, from profile that means, uh, estimation of the oil pool profile and that directly map continuously with, this, with, with, can, with the geometric shape and in that way we it is possible to uh, develop the adaptive nature of the heat source. So, in that case uh, it is not necessary to predefine all the geometric parameters um, in this case we will discuss uh, in details the adaptive volumetric heat source. Now, we start from the models of the heat source, but just uh, look into that uh, uh, Dix type of heat source. Here you can see that uh, top figure it is a representation of the arc normally we can see the end of the flame happens over a certain boundary with respect to the center and this is this follows generally typical Gaussian distribution. Now, this heat distribution in mathematical representation of the heat distribution the, uh, we can use this equation the Q r that means Q the heat intensity at a radial distance r equal to q max. Uh, q max means at r equal to 0 what is the maximum intensity and how it is varies with respect to the maximum value it starts from the maximum value and gradually de uh, decreasing with the exponential way. So, E x p exponential way and that minus c into r square c is the distribution coefficients actually the c by varying the value of the c we can represent the distribution whether it is very stiff or whether it is very flat that actually decided by this parameter distribution coefficient c. So, this is the typical representation of the uh, surface heat flux um, that we can uh, uh, follow uh, we, we can see in, in the welding process. Now, there is another uh, representation that is the uh, double ellipsoidal heat source model. So, here also if we see the figure that at the there is a dis, uh, two parameter geometric parameter of the double ellipsoid is like that C f and C r that brings the distribution of the uh, because temperature uh, gradient or uh, maybe energy deposit in the front and the back side of the wheel may be different uh, because of the velocity in one direction. And then a may be another dimension of the ellipsoidal and depth represented by the b. So, a b C f and C r all geometric parameters of the double ellipsoidal heat source. And then if we know the geometric parameters or if we can define the geometric parameters we can represent the distribution or heat flux that but that heat flux uh, distribution of the heat flux over the volume can be represented by the first these two equation first equation and second equation. But different of these two equation is that uh, we can uh, non even distribution of the uh, energy in the front part of the ellipsoid and the back side back part of the ellipsoid 
can be taken care of by these two factor f f and f r. These two fraction actually brings the uh, difference in the non uniform energy distribution in the front and the uh, back side of the ellipsoidal heat, uh, double ellipsoidal heat source model. So, here if you see that q f as a function of x y z and time t we can represent this thing and uh, here q capital Q it represents the actual amount of the heat is uh, applied to this. So, the, this Q uh, can be estimated um, that what is the effective amount of the energy is transferred to the workpiece from the laser either from the laser or from the uh, arc. So, we will see how to estimate this key. Uh, here uh, how to represent the heat source is that this is the one typical conical heat source model. Here you can see the cone, we can consider the truncated cone geometric shape and on the top surface uh, the distribution can follow the Gaussian distribution that means, at the center it is a maximum Q 0 and gradually decreasing. And then typical estimation that uh, flux density distribution uh, can be uh, <coughs> formed in this way the P basically is the laser power efficiency and all geometric parameters E radial distance R Z E and Z I are geometric parameters of the cone with respect to the uh, certain coordinate system. And then if we define all these parameters we can easily define the conical heat source model also. Here you can see the quadruple ellipsoidal heat source model. So, here if you look into that uh, figure there is the merge of the 4 ellipsoidal uh, here we can see the 1, 2, 3, 4. So, with respect to the x axis the if we consider the x axis upper side is the that uh, first material maybe one material and the other side is the another material second material. So, that since the two materials having variation in the thermophysical properties. So, therefore, non symmetry energy distribution will occur between these two metals, but in term uh, what way since the non symmetry energy distribution then this is the one way uh, to represent the heat source or to bring the difference in the heat source model. So, uh, that is why this uh, dimension of the ellipsoidal the parameters in the first material uh, one material and the other material uh, will be different in this case. So, non symmetry energy distribution uh, due to one reason is that two different material and another reason is that uh, there is a another moving heat source. So, when you want to take care of the uh, moving heat source then we, we can consider the non symmetry with respect to the y axis. So, non symmetry with respect to the y axis as well as non symmetry with respect uh, with respect to the x axis for the two different materials. So, then the we merge the 4 ellipsoidal part of the ellipsoid here 1, 2, 3, 4 and we can make a this uh, 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 ellipsoidal heat source uh, quadruple ellipsoidal heat source model. So, of course, because here you can see the double ellipsoidal heat source model only accounts the uh, non symmetry in terms of the uh, moving heat source only. Uh, double ellipsoidal model is uh, here the double ellipsoidal model we, we can simply extend in terms of the quadruple ellipsoidal heat source model uh, to accounts the non symmetry energy distribution and simply contents of the four parts of the ellipsoidal ellipsoids. And then but this one thing we have followed here that uh, depth of penetration and uh, that means depth of penetration remain the same and of course maintain the C1 continuity. That means when you merging this thing uh, the four ellipsoids uh, in this case uh, that the uh, slope uh, slope at this point is the uh, there is a uh, the continuous slope at this point. So there is no mismatch in the slope uh, as well as continuity is also there. So that's why we we are maintaining here the. C 1 continuity to develop uh, this heat source model. Now, adaptive I have tried to represent the adaptive heat source model we, we use in the welding process. So, one uh, if we see the in case of spot welding process uh, um, uh, there is a, a definition of the uh, that means, volumetric heat source can be represented by defining the by assuming the equation of the or assuming the geometric of the ellipsoid. So, here that ellipsoid the uh, once we define the ellipsoid, but that parameters geometric parameters of the ellipsoid can be vary with respect to time or can be vary with respect to the uh, load step. And uh, we have already mentioned that uh, we are doing the adaptive heat source model because the all other heat source model here it is necessary 
uh, to predefine the heat source parameter. So, before start of the simulation for the temperature distribution, we need to define uh, all the geometric parameters of the heat source. And then we can use this uh, volumetric heat source for the uh, uh, for the temperature simulation, but in adaptive scale it is not necessary to uh, predefine. So, in that sense it is advantageous uh, or maybe one uh, development happens in, in case of the simulation of the oiling process. So, in uh, adaptive oiling process we can use the same uh, distribution equation uh, what we consider in the uh, ellipsoidal or double ellipsoidal heat source model, but only thing is that there is a uh, continuous changing of this geometric parameters with respect to time if we use the transient analysis or with, with respect to the load step if we do some uh, steady state analysis. So, uh, definitely uh, this uh, uh, adaptive volumetric heat source uh, is should follow some strategy for the implementation of the any finite element based uh, analysis. Uh, in case of uh, adaptive volumetric heat source in case of uh, uh, in fusion welding here we can see uh, specifically uh, when we try to apply uh, in case of uh, <coughs> steady state analysis because steady state analysis the development of temperature in one specific point we can observe but it is not a function of time. So, then how to adapt how to change these parameters uh, uh, that means how to change this uh, uh, heat source parameters. So, here we can see that the distribution equation source is a the um, heat source changes uh, that means, heat source, uh, the distribution is over the space there is no time function here. And we see that double cell geometric parameters that means, length width and uh, penetration a b c the length these things we are simply mapping a length uh, on this with the uh, geometric size of the uh, volumetric heat source. Now, if you look into that figure, there is a continuous development of the that means, uh, updation of the oil uh, the different parameters. So, the, we see the double epsilon heat source model A, B, C and then these are the three parameter or A is basically A 1 plus A 2 that means, due to the linear movement A 1 and A 2 and other two parameters B and C. So, all these parameters evolve with respect to the ramped up power that means, normally we do the steady state analysis in the in, in, during numerical simulation not directly uh, putting the whole power in single step rather total power we can divide into number of steps that means, we can divide in that is called the load step. So, each and every load step we can update the value of the geometric parameters of the double ellipsoidal heat source and then and then once updating then there is a gradual changing of the volumetric heat source. So, that means, uh, with this uh, that updating is happens with, with respect to the ramped up power he here as compared to the transient analysis because in transient analysis this mapping or changes of this geometric parameters actually happens with respect to time that is the difference. So, in this way we can implement the adaptive volumetric heat source. We can show some uh, simulation also that adaptive volumetric heat source in steady state situation here you can see the uh, in the uh, first figure actually we actually apply the uh, 25 percent of the effective load. That means, we can say suppose uh, our total power in the steady state uh, welding process is uh, 1 kilowatt. So, therefore, after application of the 20 250 watt power this is the typical size of the oil pool. Here you can find out the oil pool that means, red color is mainly represents the molten pool zone and remaining uh, other colors actually represented depending upon the first uh, um, uh, that heat affected zone just looking into the different uh, phase transformation temperature here. So, then when the 100 percent effective load is happening then that means, we completely application of the 1 kilowatt power then there is a uh, this is this represents the that shape or size of the oil pool. So, which is different from the uh, uh, first figure. So, this way we can see there is a continuous development of the uh, oil pool, but uh, uh, during this continuous development of the oil pool with respect to the ramped up power here each and every step there is a updating of the uh, 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 volumetric heat volum geometric parameters of the volumetric heat source. We, we can see from the figure also that with and the effective load step there is a gradual increment of the uh, effective load stress and there is a variation of the width. So, that means 
from the very beginning the 25 percent effective load there is a small width and gradually increasing and almost up the certain time on the 100 percent load it reached the steady state situation and that is actually implemented using the adaptive volumetric heat source. Uh, but one point uh, like to mention that this adaptive nature of the heat source is independent of the geometric shape and size. This uh, can be implemented by assuming the any other geometric shape and size of the volumetric heat source. For example, uh, not only limited to only the ellipsoidal double ellipsoidal heat source, we can assume the any other geometric shape of the volumetric heat source and the similar fashion we can apply the uh, uh, concept of the adaptive volumetric heat source for the simulation of the uh, welding process. So, here we can see the adaptive volumetric heat source in the uh, transient state. So, transient state also in, in case of specific welding process and we assume the ellipsoidal volumetric heat source, the geometric shape the volumetric is assumed as an ellipsoid. So, here you see 0 0.2 second there is a development of some uh, well pool developed or gradually it is increasing and when it reaches to the 0 0.5 second the well pool size is bigger. So, throughout this uh, step time step the different time step or maybe you can say that at different time there is a updating of the geometric parameters and we can see that from the figure that penetration and the on time uh, that means, uh, uh, laser on time continuously we are putting the laser on time there is a gradual development of the oil penetration uh, that means, 0 0.2 there is a uh, less amount of the penetration, but when it is the 0 0.5 second the penetration becomes very big. So, there is a continuous development of the oil pool and we are doing the simulation just simply this growth development of the oil pool. Uh, that means, we measure at any step at any point of time what is the size of the oil pool and that uh, size we simply mapping with the uh, size of the volumetric heat source. Uh, there is another type of the heat source that is called uh, development uh, happens that is called a configuration heat source model. Here you can see the equation is basically we use the, um, the ellipsoidal uh, when you try to develop the ellipsoidal heat source model we use this equation. But if we use just multiplying the factor T y uh, any functional form we can modify the equation uh, a different way. So, a configuration heat source model just simply modifying the ellipsoidal equation and by introducing some functional form uh, the in this way that means x square and z square that is modified by the T y that means that is functional form as a function of y here. Then we can develop the different shape we can generate the different shape of the uh, different geometric shape. So, that is called typically called the egg configuration heat source model. So, it looks like an uh, oval shape or maybe you can say the egg shape. So, if you see this figure that if we change this parameter because T y 1 by we consider the one uh, that this functional form is the 1 by m y plus m square y square plus 1. So, here by simply changing the value of m uh, we can generate the different shape. Let us see that we, we uh, here different shape can be generated or we need to optimize the what may be typical value of the m uh, such that we can use this geometric shape for the oil pool simulation. So, in this case if T y uh, equal to 1 uh, that means, T y equal to 1 it is the simply representation of the equation of an ellipsoid that means, that is equal to uh, if T y equal to 1 that it becomes equivalent to the uh, ellipsoidal heat source model. So, here you can see the difference between the ellipse and the x shape. So, in certain uh, ellipse is the uh, is a very symmetric with respect to this thing and uh, most of the cases we use that we merge the two ellipse uh, ellipsoid and we can we generally generate a double ellipsoidal heat source model uh, to merging the two ellipsoid. So, in this case double ellipsoidal heat source model actually the number of parameters are more, but we can reduce this parameter by simply looking into this concept by checking the geometric shape that looks like an oval shape or looks like an egg shape simply the modify modifying the equation of the open ellipsoid. So, this can be incorporated in the oil pool modeling uh, of the this thing that is the one of the uh, uh, modeling approach where we can uh, apply the a configuration heat source model.